Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day 23 of Vita. With me today is Angie Nash, Nerdy Companion. I, of course, am Artemidge. First thing I want to start off with is yesterday I mentioned my friend Dylan, who works with Sarah at Dreamers Cosplay and Games. Today's his birthday! Happy birthday, Dylan! Happy birthday! So, since his guest means alcohol, so toast to Dylan! So today, Angie has a topic. We are going to be talking about self-advocacy insofar as it relates to mental health. The reason Angie has that topic is because I'm not very good at presenting it. It's not an area I've covered very well in my studies or anything. Self-advocacy is probably the most difficult and yet most integral part of dealing with any mental health issue. Self-advocacy means being able to draw lines, being able to communicate, being able to explain to someone, whether they be a layman, whether they be a healthcare professional, whether they be some guy on the bus. An inability to communicate in the area of self-advocacy means that it's harder to get the help we need. So if you can't communicate to your doctor what you're feeling and why, then they can't help you. At least not effectively. Um, it has taken me, oh, I don't know, at least eight years to develop the knowledge base, the communication skills, the pretty much checklist of what I have to cover with any new person, any new doctor. So with that in mind, let's quickly interrupt you here so everyone get a chance to know where you're coming from because as I've mentioned a few times, I myself have bipolar type 2, whereas your experience is with... Um, I apparently have a general anxiety disorder, I also have borderline personality disorder, and I have recently discovered that I also have some struggles with post-traumatic stress disorder. So if someone's struggling trying to pre present it to, say, a loved one to get the ball rolling, where would you suggest they go for a, a way to get started? There are a lot of really good articles through The Mighty that are specifically geared towards... Link in description that are specifically geared towards um, being able to communicate those things to people who have not been through it. Um, I believe they have like top 15 things you need to know about a person with this diagnosis, about that diagnosis, about the other diagnosis. Um, and I think they even go so far as to delineate between friends, loved ones, and doctors, I'm pretty sure. I've not read extensively a great deal on the mighty. I if you pay attention to my Facebook feed, if you're someone who happens to be on that, you probably see me share more than a few articles, and those ones I do tend to read, or at least most of, usually I'm reading them while at work, so that might get interrupted and I don't get back to it, but they are ones that I feel are relevant to, if not my case, enough cases to share. So it's definitely a good resource for information overall, but I haven't seen too many personally on any sort of self-advocacy. Um, there have been a few that at least start to address it. Um, I'm not sure that I can remember specific uh, like focal points for that, but I'm sure they probably exist. We just have to search for it. Um, but the ones that I like are the ones that are written from like several different people's point of view. So like topic, say one through 15. So one will be from Jane from Denver kind of thing. And it's her snapshot of this example and so on and so forth, and they're very specific and they're meant to be a snapshot from a person's perspective, and it makes you feel less alone as someone who's struggling with it, someone who hasn't been able to communicate it to other people, and it makes you feel less stupid. <laughs> At the same time, though, I find that most of those aren't so much advice as they are, this is my experience, or this is something unexpected that I find does help me, as opposed to, here's where you should be looking, here's a way to present it. Granted, but just the ability to read it in somebody else's words sometimes gives you the aha moment of why didn't I think to word it that way when you're trying to speak to somebody about it. Something as simple as, so as well as mental health problems, I also struggle with an illness called fibromyalgia. And one of the most useful tools to try and speak to a layman about how it is for me to have to budget energy every day. So I can't just do all of the things that I want to do. I have to budget my energy. Is something called the spoon theory, which you can click the link in the description box below. And it was an... Uh, it was an, an anecdote from an experience yes. at a restaurant that some girl had with a friend trying to explain her own circumstances, trying to get through a basic day. And it was a perfect picture to show someone and give them actual evidence of what it's like to go through an average day. 
and um, you'll often hear me talk about not having the spoons or having run out of spoons or you're on my last spoon or being a spoonie and that all comes from the spoon theory and it was something that I had struggled for three or four years already to try and explain to people what it was like to have to budget your spoons and as soon as I read that it was an aha moment of this this is what you need to understand about me and it is my go-to anytime I bring it up I simply go Google spoon theory and make somebody else go read it instead of my trying to explain it again and an inability to be a self-advocate isn't just detrimental to yourself it can be detrimental to relationships you're in um, a really good example of that actually is um, um, those of you who know me I am in an open polyamorous relationship and one of my partners has gone from being a primary partner status down to just a boyfriend, largely because of his inability to self-advocate for his own mental health problems. And it was something that we have talked about throughout the length of our relationship together, that we had agreed that each of us had certain steps that we had to do uh, to take care of ourselves in order for that type of relationship to continue. And it has been a sticking point. It's something that he wasn't able to do, and largely because he could not self-advocate. He does not know how to communicate what is going on with him to the people that can help him. A really good tool for self-advocacy is simply to find a sounding board, whether it is an actual person, whether it is sitting there talking at a mirror, whether it is recording your own inner ramblings through a, a voice recorder app or a journal or what have you just getting it out of your brain and trying to form it into words is a great first step something it, i might suggest as an outlet is start a youtube channel like i've done but you don't have to show yourself like i am you can throw on the voice recorder modulate your voice so you sound stupid ridiculous and throw whatever crazy random images you want on the screen and you can also just record the videos and set them as private and then use that as some sort of tool later on um, just the ability to get it out of your head the first time. You wouldn't believe how many times myself or other people that I've associated with are just trying to talk out a thing and you find the solutions to the problems just by trying to talk it out. Because some people can't untie the knot in their head until they've tried to turn it from pictures and emotions into words. And that's really the best first step you can make. So the short of it everyone is, as always, take care of yourselves and each other and I will talk to you tomorrow.